This segment brought to you by SureCrop, liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. Welcome back to Ag Aid in Kansas. I'm Britton Rucker. There's been a ton of inquiries from you cattle producers recently about putting cattle on corn stands that have been hindered by weather. I have with me now K-State Beef System Specialist Jamie Lynn Farney to discuss this option further. Welcome, Jamie Lynn. Thank you. Uh, glad to be on the program. Jamie Lynn, on your podcast, you recently brought in a beef cattle specialist from the University of Kentucky to discuss this in more detail. I did. Um, it was Dr. Jeffrey uh, Limkuller was the guy who I had on the podcast. And if you're interested in finding out more information than what we're going to be talking about here, the podcast is Dr. J's Beef. And if you are just for on your computer, you can just Google Dr. J's Beef podcast and you can find it. But it's also on iTunes, Google Podcast, and Spotify as well. Absolutely. And you actually... Um, kicked around the idea of putting yearly steers on corn stalks in this fashion. And we did. Um, and actually, when I was visiting with uh, Dr. Lim Cooler, we had talked about different stages of cattle and different stages of corn. So one thing, um, when he really got started in his evaluation of looking at corn as a forage for cattle, he was thinking about it from the grass finished perspective in Wisconsin when he started his career. And as we were talking, um, he really kind of likes grazing stalker calves or growing calves on corn when it's in about the V6 to 8 stage all the way up to R2. Now, for those of you who are like me that are cattle producers who are learning about crop stuff, um, you know, V6 just means there are six leaves on the corn plant. When you get to R2, it's in the reproductive stage. It's about, it's blistering on your ear corn. R1's when you see tasseling. And um, we kind of had talked about that that's the ideal phase to graze, especially your grower calves, because you have a lot of tonnage. Um, that's usually when your leaf is at the highest quality and you don't have as much starch in your grain to worry about acidosis and bloat issues. Now, we also had talked about for overwintering your cows on mature standing corn, which is um, something that we've been seeing a lot about in popular press articles lately, um, especially when they interview folks that are in the northern United States or Canada. That is um, something that they use instead of having to haul hay on a regular basis. And in those instances, uh, you can really utilize that forage for your cows. It's a great feed. Uh, you do have a few other things you have to think about, um, especially, you know, things that we always talk about downed corn, um, minimizing that amount of starch that goes to your cow uh, to about 10 to 12 pounds of corn a day. And so as such, you really need to implement a more strict management protocol where you strip graze it. Ideally, move your cattle every single day so that they have an equal amount of starch load across the grazing period. However, you can go up to maybe three days and be able to use, use your, uh, your strip grazing in that fashion. So that was just a few of the high points off of uh, that discussion. Kansas Corn reminds you that E15 fuel is the right choice for every kind of driver. For the car enthusiast, E15 has higher octane. For the thrifty driver, E15 is priced lower than regular unleaded. For the nature lover, E15 provides cleaner air. For the shopper who buys local, E15 has more ethanol from our Kansas corn farms. Choose E15 for a higher octane, lower price, cleaner American fuel. Message from the Kansas Corn Commission. Learn more at kscorn.com. In 1821, a trade route was opened from Missouri in the United States across prairies and mountains to Mexico. In 2021, we will mark 200 years of epic conflicts and grand adventures, larger-than-life personalities and sweeping landscapes. Join us on an historic journey. The Santa Fe Trail lives on. Find us on social media or santafetrail.org. Okay, looks like it's time for our tour. Welcome to the Fort Wallace Museum. Here at the museum, you're going to find some really interesting stuff like our replica stagecoach from the Butterfield Overland Dispatch. We've got facades from the fort buildings. We've got an 1870s flag. There's a plesiosaur that was discovered locally. 
We've got the Ray Pump Organ Collection. We're a little bit place with a great big story and we'd love to have you. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or for more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. So, Jamie Lynn, is there any specific method that works best with grazing standing corn? Uh, really and truly, the, the strip grazing is what you need to do. Uh, corn, it's kind of a one and done. When the cattle graze it, the plant doesn't just regenerate a bunch of new leaves uh, like our sorghum sedan does. And so when you strip graze, it allows you to really have one water source, which that's another thing that's great if you're looking at uh, managing for water and fencing in your crop ground, because um, of course most crop ground does not have a permanent water source. But um, you put your water source at one end of your field and then you allocate a, a specific portion of the pasture based on the number of head you have, number of days, and how much corn is out there, um, especially if you're looking at the mature corn. And then you allow them to graze so long and then you move your fence every about three days um, is kind of the most. And your cattle just keep going back to that same water source. And when we were visiting, uh, Dr. Lim Cooler and I, I hadn't thought of this, but this is a really neat managerial practice to determine whether your cattle are getting enough forage or when you need to move your fence. But he actually puts a hay bale over there by the water source. And when that hay intake is drastically increased, you know you need to move your cattle to the next paddock or the next strip. And so that's another little management tool I thought was very interesting that he had brought up. Um, when you're grazing that vegetative green corn, you don't have to worry quite as much about the, the starch issues, but um, on your mature, make sure that you keep 10 to 12 pounds of about corn for your cattle during a given day. So one of your biggest benefits, I think, is it gives producers one extra tool in their toolbox mm -hmm. to be able to maintain their cow herds in instances of drought. If you have or a dual operation where you've got both cattle and crop systems, if your corn just isn't going to make, um, it gives you some way to make some revenue off of your corn. And um, our gains can be fairly good, um, you know, especially as equitable to most other warm season annuals that we have available. So those are all some positives. And, um, you know, I always, my number one use of corn, drought stressed corn is in making silage. And, you know, there, there's a lot of benefits to using your corn in that fashion. But I realize that not everybody has the equipment the knowledge, the ability to feed silage, especially, you know, in the cow-calf sector of our industry. So using the grazing corn is actually more positive for a lot of the producers as they don't have to worry about that equipment or, you know, I've never put up silage before, what do I do? Where's my first step? <laughs> um, so that, that's another, you know, tool. Now, the negatives, like I said, there is some more management that goes into it. Um, typically, cow-calf producers, we like to turn our cattle out on a pasture and gather them up a couple of times a year and do our health protocols and move them to warm season pasture or cool season. With grazing corn, you really do need to do some strip grazing to prevent your metabolic issues. And um, especially if you have your pregnant cows, a little bit of digestive issues could lead to some potential, you know, an acidosis in particular may lead to a little bit of an abortion storm or some issues there. So doing your strip grazing is something you're going to have to do. So you're going to put up a lot more hot fence <laughs> every, every day, every three days. Um, the other thing when you're putting up your hot fences, if you think about the mechanism of how electric fences or electricity works. You can't just run your corn, your, uh, your hot fence through the corn at any point. Um, you really do need to knock down about eight feet and then run your hot wire through that part, you know, knock down about eight feet of your corn. 
And that also gives your cows a visual so that as they're walking out of the corn, because you know most corn's pretty tall, I'm only five foot tall and a lot of the corn's over my head. <laughs> so, uh, you know, just imagine what the, what the cows are seeing as well. They're not near as tall as I am. And when they are grazing through and they come to the spot that's rolled down or knocked down, they know, okay, there's something here. They're gonna slow down and stop. Uh, the cattle will still eat what is rolled down. They'll pick all the leaves and husk and the ears off, but it just provides you that extra buffer to keep your cows in your facility. So I said the management is one of the biggest downsides to this. It's going to take more time, a little bit more equipment. You know, you'll have an extra layer of hot fence that you probably didn't do before. And um, you just need to, to watch your cattle a, a little bit more to make sure you don't have acidosis bloat founder. Because once a cow founders, that's something that they're never gonna come out of. Uh, that's, they'll be long toed and potentially lame most of their life. Thanks for watching Ag Etc. As always, I'm Britton Rucker and I'll see you here next week here on Ag AM in Kansas.